I don't care. I'm honest, that's my brand. This week on The Issue Is. There's a lot wrong with everybody. An exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Bill Maher. I wanted to know, um, did the country change or did I change or both? We talk protests on college campuses. For the students to be siding with them after they committed a massacre of 1,400 people. Wokeism and the far left. If you're gonna say men can get pregnant, we're gonna make jokes about it. <laughs> His new book. My theme in the book is, I'm tired of hating half the country. Living in California. I love California, I always have. Uh, I have issues with it. I mean, I wouldn't say we're undertaxed. Plus, what question made him say this? See, already I'm stumped. And this. Get out of here, yeah. the man is talking. <laughs> <laughs> you have something important to say. Yeah. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. Welcome to a special edition of The Issue Is from West Hollywood. We're on Santa Monica Boulevard, where we're visiting the woods, co-owned by Bill Maher. I'm so happy that you liked it. Bill Maher signs the April edition of Los Angeles Magazine. Maher, this month's cover boy. Right here, please, real quick. <laughs> Maher okay. posing with LA Mag's president and publisher, Chris Gillanella, and editor-in-chief, Shirley Halpern. The article celebrating Maher's extraordinary career. Would you welcome, please, Bill Maher. In 1982, Maher's first national TV appearance is on The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. He's got some clever thoughts. Even then, religion, a big part of his act. And religion makes you do things that nothing else could make you do. Circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bill Maher, and this is Politically Incorrect. In 1993, Maher launched Politically Incorrect on Comedy Central. Who is writing this stuff? <laughs> the idea, one panel, multiple perspectives. If you're scoring at home, congratulations. The show moving to ABC in 1997, but canceled in 2002, when some advertisers thought Marr was a little too politically incorrect, less than a week after the September 11th terrorist attacks. We have been the cowards lobbing cruise missiles from 2,000 miles away. You just make it up. You do. By 2003, Bill back on TV. I got ever more cranky <laughs> about stupid things that people were doing. Launching real time on HBO, now in its 22nd season. Oh, look at you. His signature bit since week one, new rules. New rule. New rule, someone needs to tell the people who block traffic in the name of a cause, no one likes you. <laughs> it always ends with an extended editorial. Less about the cause and more about me. Look at me, watch me. And if you like the way I'm fighting injustice, remember to like and subscribe. <laughs> Those editorials now compiled together in a new book, what this comedian said will shock you. I think we are witnessing kind of a billisance. I think you are having a moment. <laughs> Since 2022, he's also hosted the largely non-political podcast, Club Random, featuring a wide variety of guests. Club Random. He's now in business with one of them, Woody Harrelson. I'm going by the woods. Mar, a minority owner of The Woods WeHo, a cannabis consumption lounge behind a cannabis dispensary. The space includes cabanas near what feels like an urban jungle full of plants, fish, and birds. We spoke inside one of those cabanas. Bill Maher, Hi. welcome to The Issue Is, and thank you for having us here. This is such an incredible spot. It, that's one of the things I've been trying to sell. You know, Woody, <laughs> Woody Harrelson bought this place, and he's, he wanted John McEnroe and I involved. You know, he said... Uh, um, you guys smoke pot with me and there's a space for you and so um, we threw in and we've yet to see money because this place is run by stoners <laughs> <laughs> but people should know it is I mean look just wouldn't you like to smoke pot in this room it's unbelievable. it has all these little bungalows it's a it's a pot store with a kind of a jungle in the background right and all these areas where you can go up and I mean there's fish there's vegetation it's it's it really is a great place if you want to you know get high at the store it feels like an oasis in the it middle really of west is. hollywood in the middle of really cool. santa monica boulevard which is wild and and congrats as well on the cover of, of la magazine thank and congrats you. on the book thank uh, you. which is what the what this comedian said will shock you yes uh, and it's a combination of your commentaries at the end of Correct. real time with bill maher yes for years people have been telling me i should put these together in a book and 
they were right. I resisted, but they were right, and I was wrong. And it does make a really good book. It's, I would say it's an encyclopedia of every damn good thing I've said in the last 20 years. I went through everything. I took out the best. I put them in chapters that made sense. And uh, you can read it like the Bible what? every night. <laughs> put it by your bed and read it like exactly. the Bible. There's something on every subject. As you went through that process and looked at everything right. over the years, what did you learn about us as a country and what did you learn about you in terms of your evolution? Well, that's an interesting, good question because that is one of the impetuses I had for doing the book. I wanted to know, um, did the country change or did I change or both? And of course it is probably some of both. Mm -hmm. But I, th I mean, I address this very uh, at length in the introduction um, because I wanted to do this excavation and I think Honestly, the country changed more than me. The politics changed. Um, when Obama was president, the left was not funny. Obama was not funny. Good. Great. The president was not a buffoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was very little place to make fun of, you know. Uh, and then wokeism came along, which I go into length is not an extension of liberalism mostly. It started out as a noble thing, alert to injustice, we're all for that, or we should be. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it veered off into some really weird areas and they just took everything 10 subway stops too far. Uh, and so it gave, you know, first of all, comedians a lot to work with. You know, if you're gonna say men can get pregnant, we're gonna make jokes about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna leave it open, okay? Right. So the left got funnier, I'm a comedian, I'm not gonna leave that on the ground. Right. And they deserve to be fed up. Now, of course, I still think the right is the greater threat. They, they don't truly anymore believe in democracy. They, they seem to have this idea that uh, elections only count when we win. Certainly, the guy they threw their lot in with, Donald Trump, believes that. Um, they've never been too good on climate change. They've always been too religious for me. I mean, they have their things, too. Um, but I think there's, there's a lot in this book for everybody because I think there's a lot wrong with everybody, mm. with both sides. Right. And we have to be honest about it. And for the people who say, oh, you're more conservative than you used to be, I don't think so. That's what I look for. I don't think so. I think things change, and I just won't bend the knee. Hmm. and pretend that things, just because my team is doing it, aren't wrong. So I'm going to call it out. When, when you do goofy stuff, wherever you are on the spectrum, I'm going to call it out. So, you know, I, my theme in the book is I'm tired of hating half the country. Hmm. I don't want to hate half the country, and I don't hate half the country, and I think a lot of the country agrees. Why do you think that so few people are willing to do that? Because it seems like so much of the incentive structure of the media right now is engineered to doing the opposite. Because it's so much easier. Because a lot of the country is frustrated. Look, I don't blame people for being driven mad by Donald Trump. He does. He drives his own people kind of crazy. And then, of course, there is a to every action, there is a reaction. So, like, how do you cover Donald Trump if you're a mainstream newspaper? He does lie. They never, they never, newspapers never would say the president lied. How do you do that with a guy who plainly still has not conceded the 2020 election? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? It's pretty hard. Um, but we are in this place now where we are entrenched, but I don't think it's the majority of the country because so many people come up to me and say, I'm with you. I'm a normie. Mm -hmm. We're normies, okay? Right. We don't look at every single thing that happens and just reflexively go, Damn, Biden, he's ruined it again. He's right. ruined this pot store. No, he didn't. He, he's got his flaws and he's not perfect and blah, blah, blah. That's what I think most people want, to get back to normal. But those people don't have the megaphone. You're right. It's the people on the fringes. And they have just such an automatic built-in audience. People who want to hear what they already believe fed back to them. It's an echo chamber. Yes, that's exactly right. That's what I've been saying. And you now said it. And I can agree with myself. Right. And that's just an easy place to go. In terms of your process for putting these commentaries together, right. I know that's something you work on all week. It all takes week. a lot. Can you walk us through your process? I should be doing it right now because it's Monday night. Monday night is when I start. I mean, I, you know, it, it's a it's process of... Uh, it gets big and then it gets small. You have to like make it fat and then whittle it down. 
until there is nothing left except what absolutely has to be there. That's true of any art. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a, a sculpture should have no extra clay, and a great song will have no extra notes, and a great editorial will have no extra words, but all the ones will count. And it has to drive toward a point, mm -hmm. a point that nobody else is making or sometimes even thinking about, and then it's got to be funny. I mean, comedy is king. Um, Anybody can get up there and pretend that any issue in the country, you know, is affecting them more than anybody else. It, no, it's not. We're all living very privileged lives in the media. Um, but you want to make the audience laugh. The, it helps the medicine go down. And it, it helps, especially when I start an editorial one way, and they're like, yeah, I agree with that. And then halfway through, sometimes it'll be like, hang on, there's another side to this, and you need to hear that too. Mm -hmm. So if you... If you get the uh, trust of the audience by making them laugh and saying the things that they agree with and that strike them as reasonable, then you can turn around and say something that maybe they hadn't considered, mm -hmm. but you think they should consider. I mean, and you were going back and forth with writers all week? No. I no, they all, I mean, I usually give them what the, what the theme is, what mm -hmm. they should write on uh, before the weekend. They work on it probably over the weekend. And then I get it on Monday. I, everybody does a pass, and uh, I go through everybody's version of it, and then do my own, and put it all, stitch it all together. And you know, it's a it, being a good editor is is really what a writer is. Yeah. You know, writing is rewriting. Up next, Mar weighs in on the protests on college campuses. <laughs> On a week when chaos on college campuses took center stage, we catch up with HBO's Bill Maher. I, I know last week's commentary was about the students on campus and this yeah. activism here. What is? What do you make of where that is going and what's happening at places like UCLA and USC? Uh, I mean, somebody has to do a page one rewrite on elite education in this country because it just went completely off course. Obviously, if you have students who are siding with terrorists, I mean, it's, and, and not just Hamas. I mean, obviously the Israeli situation is complicated. I can see being sympathetic to the Palestinians. They do have a plight. I mean, they, they have a story to tell. It's valid. Um, we're not going to go into all that. But Hamas is a terrorist organization. The people who hate Hamas the most are the people who live under their rule, mm -hmm. the Palestinians who live under their rule. Um, so for the fact that so for the for students to be siding with them after they committed a massacre of 1,400 people, the most brutal massacre we've seen in, I, don't, I can't, memory of mine. Um, and then a few weeks later, they started going through the old writings of Osama bin Laden. Most of these kids hadn't been alive when 9-11 happened. They were like, wow, this guy sounds good. He mm. hates America. What's not to like about that? <laughs> now they're down with the Houthis and Hezbollah, which is the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Do they have a clue right. what side they're putting themselves on? This is coming from somewhere, from their professors, from their colleges. And from so, TikTok. And from TikTok. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. But it's certainly backed up by the people who should be instructing them better. Mm -hmm. They've got to look in the mirror. When we come back, Bill Maher on why he lives in California. Some are saying that, Bill. Some are saying that. <laughs> Some are saying that at NYU they hate the Jews. Right? Comedian the Matt like Friend you know, recently you know, appearing on Mars Club you know, Random you know, Podcast. <laughs> You also are doing Club Random, this podcast that has just taken off. Congratulations Thank on you. that, where you have people uh, at your, the extension to your home. It's an extension uh, of this place, and people really. hang it's, out, it's and a, it's, a, it's, it's so a fun. It's pot den, yeah. and uh, that, that show is completely the opposite of real time in the sense that it's not political, it's not intended to politi be political, and it's not something I work one second on except when I'm actually there. It's just what I would be doing here right. if I was, if this was a... a relaxed kind of night where I didn't have to work and I could smoke pot. I'd sit here with a friend and we would just shoot the whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, whatever comes up. I have no agenda. I have no idea where I'm going to go with it. That show is completely produced, directed, and starring marijuana. Uh, kind of like this place. Like right? this place. Yeah. And uh, 
it's it's been a joy because there are so many people who are not really appropriate to do real time. Real right. time is is a political show. I mean, right. you have to really know what's going on in the world. Right. And I can't, not everybody does. That doesn't mean they're dumb. It just means that's not where their interests are. Um, and we want to put on the A team for the audience. The audience who wants to hear that show wants to watch people who know what they're talking about. They mm -hmm. want to watch the pros. Well, that's not what most celebrities are and most people are. But I want to talk to Sammy Hagar or whoever yeah. was. You know, Jerry Seinfeld Sammy was there Hagar. yesterday. That oh, wow. Yeah. How and, cool is that? Oh, great. I mean, that's a friendship of 45 right. years. So, you know, whether I'm talking to somebody I've known forever and we're getting together in a way where we're always starting with, we should do this more often and this yeah. is a great reason to do it, or it's somebody who I've never met, then uh, I think it just, either one is just a pleasure. It's a pleasure to get to know somebody and it's a pleasure to get to, like hang with somebody I know real well. Um, and, and as a Californian, we're the California show. Um, what do you make of, I know you've talked about your solar experience with the yes. shed. We have solar, ladies and gentlemen, we have solar. I was bitching about it on television for six months. <laughs> what do you make the state of, of California, Governor Newsom and sort of where we're at? Well, it's a love-hate, you know, always has been. Where, where every, look, wherever you live, it's a love-hate relationship. Name one place that's perfect. It always looks perfect from the outside. Right. You know, I am from the East Coast. I lived in New York twice. I mean, I've been very honest about my feelings about New York, and I've paid the price in the media because most of the media is based in New York, and, and they're very chauvinistic about their city. And unless you get on board with New York as the greatest city in the world, you're the right. enemy. And I think I really did pay a price. I don't care. I'm honest. That's my brand. Mm -hmm. And my honest feeling is I love California. I always have. Mm -hmm. uh, I have issues with it. I mean, I wouldn't say we're undertaxed. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and of course, you know, the regulations, I once wanted to cut down a tree in my yard, there's a hundred just like it, you can't do that without, I'd get the approval of the Environmental Review Board, the city, the states, the Parks Department, the Fakawi yeah. Indian Drive, the UN <laughs> Security Council, and the 11 Berkeley students who are right. now living in the tree. Right. Um, but, you know, all and all, I mean, I came out here and it just, you just vibe with the city or you don't. And I never vibe with New York. I, I didn't like the weather. It's too cold in the winter, too muggy in the summer. Yeah. I don't like living in a building. I didn't get along with the girls. California, it's just my, I just, it's my cup of tea. I love it. So, you know what, you say what you want about me in California or this state or whatever. Why does everybody live here? Everybody <laughs> who can lives in this city. You'll, you'll be yeah. shocked at, at the people who you don't think live here. You know, you think, oh, Johnny Depp, sure, he's got a place in France. No, he doesn't. I mean, he does, but he lives here. Right. Everybody lives here. Why does Jay-Z live here? He can live anywhere in the yeah. world. Yeah. He lives here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, there's something to it. When we come back, Marr plays personal issues and answers some questions he's never been asked before. See, already I'm stumped. <laughs> and we wrap up with something real fun. This is 30 seconds rapid fire stuff of your f cultural favorites. Okay, I'm it's called always personal bad. issues. I'm, I'm, I'm warning you, I'm always bad at rapid fire. Okay, so take your time then. <laughs> uh, what, Bob Costas, Harvey Levin say real time is their favorite TV show. What's your favorite TV show? See, already I'm stumped. <laughs> um, this one? This one. The issue is, uh, what's your favorite book of all time? You know, I loved Heart of Darkness. I haven't read it since college. It's probably, probably one you get canceled for liking now. <laughs> In college, it was good. Yeah. Favorite sports team, I think we know what that is, right? Well, I was a part owner of the Mets. The Mets, right. Uh, so I got to go with the Mets. And who is your role model? Um, again, see, I should have answers to these questions. I'm 68. I haven't thought about who my role model is. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess different people for different things. There are people I admire who I think are, like, I, I just look to who's better than me at things. You know, like Obama. I couldn't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't get elected president. I certainly couldn't get elected as the first black president. Yeah. Um, I mentioned Jerry Seinfeld. Jay Leno, they were, I mean, they were like mentors to me when I started because they were a little older yeah. and like they were, they always stayed exactly who they were, you know, they were never seduced by the great success they had and they always were like more mature than me 
certainly, mm -hmm. and the other comics, and and just just led a life of e exemplary behavior, which is not always something I can say about myself, and certainly most of the comics I know. I, I'll just say this uh, in terms of you, honestly, are one of my role models. Oh, I appreciate and, and it. I, I, you're one of the reasons that I got into this business. Oh, thank uh, you. Our show is based off of. Um, okay. I'll, I'll just finish this nice moment and then we'll end it. <laughs> Don't interrupt this for crying out loud. This is the part we want to get this on is the tape. Get out seconds. of here. Yeah. The man is talking. <laughs> you have something important to say. Yeah. Shoo. I, I will just, I'll just say this. No, I appreciate you know, that. Honestly, like, your show is one of the reasons, watching Politically Incorrect and watching Real Time is one of the oh, reasons wow. that I got into this business. Well, that's great. Uh, when we that. launched the show, the issue is our set design was based off of Real Time. Our, cool. our sound, our, our music was based off of Real Time. Oh. And you have, I think what you do in trying to bring people together and talk about things and show both sides and yeah. have an actual conversation is so important. Thank you. And, and honestly, you've changed my life in such a big way and I think have changed so many other people. That, so, that is the nicest right. thing I've heard in a long time. Honestly. I really appreciate so, it. I know it's heartfelt. Thank you for the I'm sure we'll see each other in the future because yeah. I think you've got a big future. Thank you very much. That I means a lot. Bill yeah. Maher, okay. thanks so much for thank coming you. on The Issue Is. Our thanks to Bill Maher for a conversation I'll never forget. Uh, also, a thanks to the folks here at The Woods for hosting us. All right, we got lots of plugs to get in. This cover of LA Magazine is on newsstands now. You can pre-order Bill's book right now, which comes out later in May. You can watch Bill on Real Time with Bill Maher, Friday nights on HBO or on the Max app. And you can listen to or watch Club Random podcast on YouTube or wherever you stream your podcasts. Is that enough plugs? <laughs> okay, thank you for watching The Issue Is. We really appreciate it. We'll see you next week with more.